He retired two years ago after serving the Parkview Christian Church in Little Rock, Arkansas. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Stan is a graduate of Transylvania University and Lexington Theological Seminary. He received his doctorate from Trinity Seminary in Evansville, Indiana. Stan is also a retired chaplain from the United States Air Force Reserve. Since returning to Kentucky two years ago, after serving churches in other states, including what, Petoskey, Michigan, was that one? He has been interim minister at Eminence Christian Church, serving salt pulpit supply minister at Bedford Christian Church and currently began as interim at Lafayette Christian Church here in Lexington. So it's my pleasure to introduce Stan McDougall. This doesn't mean anything I understand. <laughs> What time is the ball game? Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Yeah. What time does Keeneland start? Ten thirty for me. Ten thirty. Well, I got news for you. It's just like Pastor John. He had just had all of his remaining teeth pulled, and new dentures were made. Well, that first Sunday that he was back in the pulpit, he preached only 10 minutes. The second Sunday, he preached only 20 minutes. But the third Sunday, he preached one hour and 25 minutes. <laughs> and he was asked by some of his congregation, why? And he responded this way. Well, the first Sunday, my gums were so sore, it hurt to talk. The second Sunday, my dentures were hurting a lot. And this third Sunday, I accidentally grabbed my wife's dentures, and I couldn't stop talking. This is a men's I got the same reaction from my wife this morning. Now, I was kidding the other night, Thursday night when I brought, brought the wife to, to choir practice that, uh, to make sure everything was short so everybody could get to church tomorrow. Okay. I thought... You know, I'm the new kid on the block. Um, Lynn and I became members here at Central back, I think, the end of January. And uh, when we, you've heard that we moved back just a couple, really a year and a half ago. And when we moved back, uh, well, anyway, to get, get part of that story, um, when after I retired um, at Parkview, and I'll tell more about that in a little bit, I looked at Linda two years ago, and we were at home, and we were watching worship on, you know, YouTube or Facebook out of Frankfurt first. And I says, what do you think about going back to Frankfurt? And she looked at me and says, I've been thinking, thinking the same thing. So to make this whole long story short, we, you know, I got on the realtor, and I found that we found a house, and of course, by the time he turned around, it was gone. But we found a house that was being built, and at that time, it was only a hole in the ground. And we put the offer in on it, and got it. Put our house on the market. It sold within five hours. Um, we moved out of Little Rock at following 20 inches of snow that week. Came up here at the end of the ice storm in mid-February. Lived in a travel trailer from mid-February to 1st of July when we were able to get into, move into our house. Now, we thought we were going to center ourselves in Frankfurt. And the only time we probably would come to Lexington was when Linda would get her Dillard fixed and we'd have to... You know, take care of that. But um, I, I inquired about, you know, interims with Dean Phelps when he was at, at, in the office. And that's how I developed go, getting involved with going to Eminence and was there for five and a half months. After that, we said, okay, we'll settle in and worship it down at First Church in Frankfurt where my faith was nurtured there. And... It just what didn't sit right. It didn't feel right anymore. So I said, let's go. Uh, well, we, we said, let's go. And we worshiped up at Highland for a little bit. And that wasn't, didn't feel right either. 
because there were some similarities of what we had experienced. And I said, let's go try Central. Well, the first time we walked in the doors, we felt at home. Amen. And uh, Linda Goss, she wanted to be involved in choir since she hadn't sang in the choir for several years because we didn't really have one. And she found her niche there. Several tried to get me to sing in the choir, but I said, no, my spot where I feel comfortable is right around the corner. But I really just wanted to sit in the pews and, and be fed for a while. So that's how we ended up here. And we have found our place here and very, feel very much at home. And um, Linda and I, we began to, we have volunteered, and she still does it on Fridays at the uh, thrift shop. So if you go there, you'll see her more than you see me now. That's how we got here. You know, I'm a native of Frankfurt. I grew up there. I grew up down in South Frankfurt, just three blocks from... I really just want to introduce myself to you today. That's really what this is all about. But since I grew up in South Frankfurt, grew, uh, just three blocks from the state capital. My father worked for state government, and my mother, when I got toward high school age, began working with what was then known as South Central Bell Telephone. My education was in the Frankfurt Independent School System, a graduate of Frankfurt High School. We were active, my parents were active members at First Christian in Frankfurt, and by the way, they were married by uh, Bob Stauffer's father. And of course, I grew up under the ministry of Dr. John Chenault. And of course, I'm going to seminary, and I'm a Timothy of First Christian. The interesting thing about that, in that period of time, I think there were four or five of us from Frankfurt First in Lexington at the same time. Well, having grown up through faith through Frankfurt First and that call to ministry, I furthered my education. I finished up at Transylvania. I did not begin there, but I finished up there in, in this December of 1970. So I consider myself in the class of 70, even though really they wanted to put me in 71. And then went across town to Lexington Seminary. Finished there in 1973, and then I left the state <clears throat> and served churches in Missouri and in Illinois, in Michigan, in Mississippi, and in Arkansas. And of course, each of those congregations were unique in their own particular ways. Now, we had a situation when I was at Parkview. We had a lady who was in, she kind of considered, she was an old truck driver. She thought she was, what well, she was trying to, she had a little, what she called a truck ministry. She'd go out to the truck stop and have a ministry with truck drivers. Well, she got her credentials to be commissioned, but she had to come up with renewal. So when I, in trying to encourage her to do some continuing education on her renewal, I, had to, I told her, I says, okay, if you go back and do this, then what, to help you and encourage you, I will go back and work on a doctorate. So two years ago, I received my uh, doctorate in religious studies in New Testament from Trinity Seminary in Evansville, Indiana. And I, excuse me, I was a colleague that I had in Arkansas that got his um, MDiv from, from them. I will say also, now it wasn't on my radar uh, until about nine, when I was about 38 years old. And we were living in Brookfield, Missouri. And Linda, there was another minister there. He was in one of the United Methodist churches there. And he talked to Linda about would I be interested in, in chaplaincy. And he thought, maybe. He was thinking Navy chaplaincy, but I thought, okay, if I'm going to do this, uh, I'll go Air Force. So I looked into it <clears throat> and um, got my endorsement and, and became chaplain in the, the reserves. Basically, it was the IMA program, the Individual Mobilization Augmentee, which you augmented the active duty staff. And so I retired there after 16 years. Now, Lynn and I, 
we met by mutual friends. Um, Bill Evans and I were in seminary together, and his now wife, they were involved in the, student, the Lutheran uh, Student Center at UK. I got to admit, Linda was a Lutheran at that time. And so they got, were getting married down in, outside of Warrensboro. So I decided to go, I would go to the wedding and uh, support Bill. Well, they, you know, after, after the reception, I, of course, I sat down and was talking to Linda during the reception. And before I had to return home, I asked Linda to go have something to eat with me. And so we went to Frishies down in Owensboro. And then we drove down to the Ohio River. And the rest is history. So something happened down at, on the Ohio River. Um, Linda is, uh, she grew up here in Lexington over in the Garden Side area, over on Awick Drive, and she's a graduate of Lafayette, <clears throat> me, and she's a graduate of UK College of Pharmacy, which has worked out real well. We have a daughter, Melissa. She's married to Matthew Coger, and they have two daughters, Kaylee and Emery. They live over in the Netherlands. They're with the Department of Education, Department of Defense Education Activities. Both are educators. Uh, Melissa teaches fourth grade, and Matthew's a school psychologist. Kaylee graduates next year, <clears throat> and we're hoping that she'll come to Trancy next year. I'll have to wait and see what Emory decides to do. She's got another four years. Jacob lives in Mississippi, and he has a daughter, Stella Bay. We also have a basset hound named Coda. We have two long-haired doxies named Linus and Gabe, and we have a short-haired doxie named Angel. And then we have three cats named Prissy, Charlie, and Lucy. <laughs> yeah. Now, y'all try to live with all that in a three-foot travel trailer for five months. <coughs> Excuse me. I am a member of the Kentuckians Barbershop course, and if there's anybody here who would like to to join the course, they meet it on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock at the Crestwood Church. Um, and of course, that interest goes back when we were in Missouri the first time, when I um, was a member of what was then known as the Pony Expressman of St. Joe, Missouri. And then there was a distance between it until we moved it to Little Rock, and I was sitting in my office one day after the church had moved, and we were meeting in an office, office building. And I was just sitting at the table, and I thought, pulled up the barbershop on Pandora. And I said, I wonder if there's a chapter here. And there was, and I got involved with the Diamond State course, which eventually became Acapella Rising. And then we were moving back. Um, I became, uh, started watching the Kentuckians on YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but on, on uh, streaming they were doing, and became a member there. <clears throat> I'm a member of the Lions Club. Uh, I was a member of the Little Rock Founders Lions Club in Little Rock, and while there, I became district governor in Arkansas, like in 1516, and now a member of the uh, Frankfurt Lions Club. And you heard about uh, how Tim was saying that I've done an interim at Eminence, I fulfilled filled about nine weeks up at Bedford, and now currently over doing the interim at Lafayette. And um, we're just getting ready to answer the, work on the questions of what God's calling uh, the church to be and to do. Now, that's kind of an introduction of who I am, so hopefully you got a little bit, know me a little bit better. Now, <clears throat> let me just share some experiences that I think had an input or an influence on my life. Because I'm thinking one of the questions was about father influences. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> i got to say one thing about that. My father, the only advice he ever gave me, he says, I don't want you to work for state government. <laughs> um, he came, he, he grew up in western Kentucky, in Callaway County. He said, always told the story he came to Frankfurt State six weeks and, of course, spent the rest of his life. 
because that's where he met my mother. <clears throat> when I was in chaplain school, and it was way back when I got started, um, the chaplain school was down in Montgomery, Alabama. And so one particular Sunday, um, I went to another fellow who happened to be a disciple, clergy. We went down to Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church. And they learned that we were, you know, chaplains out there about the base. And we were invited to, they, one of the deacons had passed it on to the pastor there. And, and of course the tradition there was to invite you to come forward and sit up front, which I did. But it also happened to be Communion Sunday that day, so I was invited to help serve communion in Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church. And as I sat there, I could just remember just thinking about Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and all that happened there in Montgomery. In Little Rock, really is where most of these nice experiences happened. <clears throat> we had a fellow, fellow by the name of um, Ron Coins, and he was in the hospital. He happened to be dying. Right? And there was a lady there. She happened to be a chaplain at the hospital. And, <clears throat> excuse me. So I went there, and uh, his wife, Mary Lou, who happened to be the truck driver who had the truck ministry, was there. But this lady was there with, with them. And I didn't know who she was. So I introduced myself to her, and she, her last name was McDougal. And I was you know, as we do, you want to inquire about some, some of their background and how they're connected. But anyway, after, the, after his funeral, when we were at the cemetery, there was a group of guys that rode the motorcycles. And so there was one there with a Harley, and so he let me sit on his Harley. And they were talking and asked me, well, do you know who that lady was? And I said, no. Well, it turned out to be Susan McDougal, who was the wife of James McDougal, who were both involved in the Whitewater scandal. So, talking about touching history. Another lady in the Parkview Church was Velma Mothershed Ware. She's a very petite little lady. She's got her health problems now. She has MS in these days. But she was one of the Little Rock Nine who integrated Little Rock Central High School. Then her, then her sister's husband, her sister Grace, his husband, was Preston Davis. And I learned from him he was not in the first group that did the sit-ins in Greensboro, North Carolina. But he was in about the second or third group that did those sit-ins back in the 60s. And he always told us, he would tell a story about how he and his family lived across the street from a family that were involved in the Klan. But they were always left alone. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there was another gentleman that, that I encountered by the name of Addison Dean, an African-American man. And through him I met, met, met Milton Crenshaw, who was a teacher, who, or who was an instructor, instructor for the Tuskegee Airmen. And while we were in Michigan, in Petoskey, I don't know if y'all remember, there was an emphasis for men 30 years ago, maybe 35 years ago, about how to become involved in Habitat for Humanity. Well, this one, being pastor at, at, at Petoskey first, I thought, okay, now how can we get men involved in Habitat? Well, we had an in informational type meeting and out of that came a steering committee that eventually sat around our dining room table that formed Northwest, Northwest Michigan Habitat for Humanity. So I'm kind of, I consider myself the father of Northwest Michigan Habitat for Humanity. Which is still going after 30 years. Um, I mentioned Jacob. 
Jacob is Korean by birth. <clears throat> and we adopted him when he was three and a half. He was coming out of a disrupted adoption. And <clears throat> one night I was sitting in, in my chair at home and I got thinking about that and where he come from and he became, we got him through the Holt um, uh, group. And so I looked up, looked up, up, up on the Holt and discovered that they had a heritage tour for Korean uh, children, families. And I inquired about that and so Lynn and I went over to Mississippi to see Jacob and his wife at that time. And I had to say he's separated. There, he and his wife are separating. Um, and I asked, I said, Jacob, would you like to go to Korea? He thought for a moment. Well, it was at that time that Lions International was having their um, international convention in Busan. And I thought, well, okay, that'd be a good way for I could go and take him and he could see Busan. And that's how it all got started. And he thought about it for a minute. And he says, yeah. So I got him, got him connected in to Holt and fill out all the applications and everything. But to make this long story short, um, they located his biological father. And we were eight, when we went over 10, 11 years ago now, um, he was able to meet his biological father. And to this day, I would not give you put a price on that experience. Uh, the tears were shed like, you know, you would not believe. Um, Jake was able to visit his grand, the grandmother's house where he lived. And when we left, the, his father with his uh, translator went with us down to the platform on the train to take us back to um, Seoul. One of those moments. And as, we, as that train pulled out, Jacob started crying. His wife at that time started crying. I started crying. Linda started crying. The director of the trip started crying. And another lady behind them started crying. It was that type of an emotional experience. Okay. Where are we? I think one of the hardest, the hardest experience, or, or, or not hard, but tough experience, was to close the church down. Parkview um, was located in the southwest part of Little Rock, relocated there. They were first um, just look. They had they came out of the old Wright Street, Wright Avenue Christian Church, and, and relocated the first property. And then the doctor's building that was next to them bought that property, and they moved to southwest Little Rock. And the demographics changed, and they you know, declined. It wasn't on the radar when I went there, but we did the study and discovered that it was best to relocate. And, but over the years, um, we had a three bedroom house and another building that we made into the worship center. But we didn't grow like we thought we would grow. And they got in the red. And I kept thinking someone was gonna raise the question, one of them. And, but I finally had to raise the question. Um, and they decided to close. So two years ago, uh, we took two months to close her down. And on the second, the last second, the last Sunday of August is when I celebrated 47 years of ministry. I thought, okay, that's time to retire. And then we shut the church down on the last Sunday of August two years ago. It's not an easy experience to say farewell. Uh, that's the toughest part. And there's other, there's other experiences over the years. But what am I most grateful for? Well, I am blessed that I've experienced almost now, come June of next year, 50 years of ministry. They have been, there's been good spots in the, these 50 years. And there's been some marvelous experiences and the people that I've been able to meet and touch who've touched my life that made me better. 
I've been blessed. And I'm being blessed right now as doing the interim work over at Lafayette, trying to begin now to work with them on discovering who they are as they come, you know, as we come out of this COVID experience. There's been many God, what I, I call God things, it's happened over these years. Our coming back to Frankfurt is a God thing for us as we look back on it. Our experience of now being members here at Central is a God thing for Linda and I. We're blessed. And I look back over, over all these years and remember how kind of little shy kid I was in, in Frankfurt growing up. And I imagine if you could go back and, and walk down the main hall at, at Frankfurt first, there may still be a, a, a little dent in, in, in the hallway where I stood up and leaned myself up against waiting for my mother to come down from her science school class to, before we went into worship. But thinking about how reserved I had been over my life, and still somewhat reserved, I am truly blessed beyond measure. Truly blessed. And I hope that over these years and those that I've touched that I have blessed them as I've shared the word and continue to share the word. So that's my story. Um, I will extend an invitation if you, you know, if you don't want to worship here some Sunday, come over and worship with us at Lafayette. <laughs> you know, I will say, um, like all of us, or all the churches right now, they're not as big as they used to be. But they're faithful, and um, they are, I know next year, If you're probably aware that they do have the, the daycare over there, but next year it will be celebrating its 50th year uh, with Lafayette. So, and also right now, to go to Lafayette, there's only two ways you can get in there, really one way. Uh, as you know, Place Mill is being worked on, and that's right where it is right now. They're right in the middle, they sit right in the middle of it. Um, yeah, I know. But, uh, but the daycare's open. Huh? But the daycare's open. The daycare's <laughs> open, uh, and I'm there three days, three mornings a week, because I believe that, that I need to be present on campus. Um, yeah, Blue Ash will take you straight to the church, and, but I've also learned that you can go, and I think it's McCovey, you can come in that way and, and go around the barriers and, and drive down. But uh, it's an experience watching it be done, too. So, anyway, as I say, what time does the ball game start? <laughs> <laughs> you get me talking, I won't know if will shut up. Okay, anybody got any questions or anything, I guess? That's a question to ask. I got a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sure Dave Wallace would also like to know this. Uh, is, there a little is there a little walk? Is there a little walk in the walk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the rock is there. <laughs> you can see it. No, I haven't seen it. It's right. Under, it's under one of the bridges. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But there is a little rock there. Okay. Yes, David. And I would like to let everybody know that now you're a member of the Transylvania Bar Society. That's true. I'm a Bar Society member. Yes. We did that last, what, Thursday a week ago? Okay. I knew Josh... I knew of him. I didn't really know him personally because when I commuted, when I lived there, I commuted. And I was on the academic side of Transy and not the resident side of Transy. So I don't think he even crossed Broadway those two years. Okay. Yes, sir. You were speaking of the uh, Lafayette uh, child care. Yes, sir. And its anniversary. Uh, my wife, Linda Lou Case, at that time. That's uh, right. She started that. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Linda Lou Case at that time was instrumental in the daycare at Lafayette. And uh, just another little connection with Lafayette. When Harold Tackett was pastor there, his wife was Barbara, who was a Barbara Stivers, and she came out of the Frankfurt First Church. While her father, Louis Stivers, did my ordination prayer when I was ordained. And of course I went to school with Barbara's baby sister, 
very. So there's all kinds of connections that I'm learning. Okay, anything else?